All right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, now today I've got another master cylinder to do. Today it's the clutch, the other one on the other side of the bars. Good to get them done because when they're all absolutely perfect, you know you don't have any issues in the future. I also want to get the oil cooler lines plumbed in. I've got those unions now. I can talk those into the engine so they're there permanently and then I can maybe chop up the lines and route them in the correct way. I've got loads of extra on those Goodrich hoses. I get them cut to length, routed the right way and that's the oil cooler signed off and finished. So there we are, let's get stuck into that. Today, 28, I right, booster build. Welcome back.
butterfly just preempting something that I might get flame for there, pushing that rubber boot down into place with two screwdrivers. It's quite safe because round the bottom of that rubber boot, what I'm pushing on is not soft, squishy rubber. You're not likely to puncture it. What it is, if I just rip it out, this is the old one, that's the rubber bit. And what's inside there is that. It's like a coil of wire, a couple of coils of wire there. And that strengthens and reinforces the bottom ring of that rubber boot and it holds it out against the side. So all you're doing is you're just pushing it gently out inside. So just line it with rubber lube, grease it all up with rubber lube so it's nice and slimy and then gently push it down inside with two screwdrivers. Obviously not taking care not to puncture it or to go through the rubber. I've been doing this loads of years. It's very easy, honestly. The first time you do it, you'll see it just slides down nicely. If you're at all worried, then use a couple of cotton buds or something like that. Whatever it is, you just need to squeeze that down inside. No problem at all, because it's got a rubber liner which supports it, so it sits down at the bottom. And because I've packed that out now with rubber loop, that will not get any water or corrosion inside there to corrode, hopefully, in the future. That one wasn't too bad. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, the wear on this inside, you can see that if you look at that, this is a kind of a worm screw type casting with a rubber seal around. But you can see the on the outside the shiny bits with kind of lines along it where that has been rubbing against the inside of the metal bore. So there is wear going on there. So putting a new rubber seal that's attached to a new one of these and a new rubber base seal and a new spring to give it a little bit more spring in its step, it all works. It all makes it fresh and serviceable for the next 20 years, hopefully. Anyway, there we are. Let's chuck it back on the bike and get on with the next job. Okay, okay, that's all the hydraulics done. All seven units, if you consider the brake calipers, master and slave, all together, seven units done. Tick, underlined, no more need to worry about that. So one more job today, plumb the oil cooler in. Make sure I don't need to buy any more parts for that or fabricate anything else for that. Once that all plumbs in okay, nice and safe, then that's it. Then there's just two more jobs left before I get into the fabrication. I am that close. So let's get it jacked up and get that bit done. back in. 50% success on the plumbing for the oil cooler. That pipe, the first one, bang on. Looks absolutely perfect, fits perfectly, curled inside the headers. Lovely, unobtrusive, neat, tidy looking install of the first oil feed pipe. The second one, couldn't be more difficult. It just doesn't matter which way I stack it, it's not going to fit. The problem is I bought two of these 90 degree unions. They fit flange flat against the engine with an O-ring and it just brings out 90 degree and that worked on the other one perfectly because it comes out the engine like that at 90 degrees and then fits that way and runs off round to the cooler. Problem is, when I put this on and I test fitted it 
with one of those, I had the other exhaust in place. The other exhaust is one inch wider apart. The four pipes in a cluster, they're just one inch further apart and it fitted. With these, they don't. It doesn't matter what you do, that one inch is essential. It would have fitted with about a quarter of an inch clearance on the pipe. Absolutely fine, no problem at all. But it is now not fitting at all. So when I bolt this to the engine and go to put the pipe on it, it either fouls on the oil filter or if I turn it around the other way, because it's reversible, it hits the exhaust itself. Neither way is it going to fit. So I've got to go back to the people I bought this from. Be really nice to them. It's unmarked. There's no marring on it at all. There's no scratches on it. It's perfect. I've been really careful with it. Polish it up, put it back in the packaging, which I've kept really nice. And hopefully I can send it back to them and exchange it for a straight one. So instead of coming out and going 90 degrees, it goes straight on. That's the aim. Now, if they'll do that, that'd be very kind of them. And it will save me 22 pounds for another one because that's how much they were each. 45 pounds for those two unions in order to fit this, but it was well worth it because that is a way better oil cooler than the cacked up factory one. And so I've got to deal with that before the next video, during or after somehow, but I'll deal with that off screen so that's that sorted. Now, the next thing is the tank, the fuel tank tap. The tap coming out of it to be the petrol that is leaking. It's been leaking ever since I've had the bike. Every now and again, I come in the garage, I can smell a whiff of petrol. So clearly the next job is to rebuild the fuel tap on this Hayabusa. But for today, that's the plumbing half done and all the hydraulics done. So we're still making progress. There we are. Thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. I'll break the board and I'll see you next time.